fresh out the box. Fresh California plums. Welcome to Fresh Film Fridays, the podcast where two dudes spin a wheel, it chooses three brand new movies, and they discuss it. Today, we're talking about Amazon's Jolt, Netflix's Blood Red Sky, and also Netflix's Fear Street Part 3, 1666. I'm your co-host, Alec. And I'm Justin. And I think we should probably... Probably start off by saying major, major spoilers. We're going to ruin all of these movies. So if you haven't seen these, um, shut this off now. Come back later because this is going to destroy all of these movies indefinitely for you. Unless uh, you, you want to know before you see it, you know? That's true, too. That's true, too. But I just want to give a give a heads up, fair warning. I don't want to get doxxed. People come to my house. You know, like hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, Justin, uh, which movie do you want to jump into first? I think we should finish the podcast with fear street part three because it's the end of the trilogy and i think we should start with our least favorite which i'm pretty sure we both can agree was <laughs> we both can agree is jolt correct that is 100 percent accurate yes. okay okay well just to give you some some background i found this because i was scrolling through amazon and it was like brand new movie jolt and i was like oh kate beckinsale like i gotta put it on the wheel it's kate beckinsale and um it was, I mean, what, were, what were your thoughts? This this is what I was thinking the entire movie, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to say this on the podcast. The The best thing I can describe this movie is, eh. <laughs> and that's it. It's like, it's, eh. It's, 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 it's fine. It's not. It's not good. It's, it's not bad. It's not. It's more bad than good, for sure. It's just like a John Wick kind of want. It's like Crank and John Wick got, like, mixed together, but, like, diluted really hard. Yeah, that was actually one of the first reviews I read. That really? It was like, it's a it's a more shitty female version of Crank. <laughs> I mean, Crank is no masterpiece, don't get me wrong. But I think it was just like, I could see where they were going with this. I, just right from the start, I just didn't like it. Because I was just like, what's the reason for this? She has a serotonin problem that makes her just like have horrific outbursts of anger but like she's just wasn't... really mad yeah <laughs> yeah yeah crank was at least what like he got injected with something he's like you got one hour like this is why you have to do this this is like hey you got like a disability basically and uh <laughs> there's nothing we can do but we're gonna put you in new york city probably the worst place you can be for aggression and you're gonna be crazy speaking of that like i thought it was hilarious outside of her apartment was like the pink neon sign and i was like how the hell can anyone sleep with that like yeah <laughs> yeah like that would definitely piss someone off i i have been going non-stop so like since i've seen this movie i haven't really looked into it much but i'm, a, I'm i think it was filmed it looked like soho or at least it was trying to look like that area of new york i don't know where it was actually filmed but that is exactly what those streets look like but I, it does take it, it takes place in america yeah doesn't it take place in new york uh, i mean i'm pretty sure yeah, it seemed like an American city. One of the the funniest reviews, because I was just like browsing IMDb, it, it said uh, this guy gave it a three out of ten and it said jolt into another movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I actually thought the acting was pretty good. I thought it had a pretty strong cast. I mean, Kate Beckinsale does great. She really is like the reason this movie is tolerable. Stanley Tucci was fine. I didn't really understand what his character was. He was like her like handler, I guess. I, I guess he was like her therapist and also like the guy that invents those things, but like gets arrested for helping her. So I, I don't know, man. It, it, I didn't really care. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. But she's a bouncer. That's the thing. I thought this movie was going to be about her being the bouncer, not about her like getting revenge on some dude she barely knows. It, it was kind of like she finally like opened up and met that guy, which I think his I think you say his name Jai. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but he he's a cool actor. And like she finally opened up. And then he died within like 48 hours. And for some reason, she was like, I have to avenge his death. Yeah, that's another stupid thing, because I was like, all right, well, at least with John Wick, I know like he just got that puppy, but like that puppy is basically like an extension of his wife. So it's like, I understand why he he wants to go crazy about that and his car. But for this, it was like, you you barely know this guy. Like, and then, then he ends up being an asshole in the end anyways. So it's like, was it even real? They they had some some good actors in it. Like I mentioned, Jai the main uh, the main guy, but also Detective Vickers. Oh yeah, Bobby Cannavale, right? Dude, I think that guy's hilarious. <laughs> like, 
yeah. he's just like a typical like italian new yorker and i'm like ah his, his stereotypes are true <laughs> uh okay really quick dude so i've at my job i have to watch like so many tv shows and i've been watching sex in the city at work like for i have to for my job and uh not that it's a bad <laughs> show but i'm just saying and there's an episode where he's in it and if it, the whole joke of it is is that his cum tastes weird <laughs> from all the ragu but i don't know i don't know so like samantha or whatever like the older woman she just is like oh he's got like weird tasting gum and he's like baby you give the best head like come on like and she like <laughs> makes him taste his cum and he's like oh nah. fuck i swear to god but anyways <laughs> i just watched this with him and i was like <laughs> it's funny to see that anyways. all right good to know yeah, um... so he's come a long way dude i thought it was pretty cool uh when she was in the hospital and she was like chucking babies do you remember oh my... that you liked that? I was, it was like, it was pretty funny, dude. Oh my god, I was like, that was the moment I was like, I am so checked out of this movie now. Did you notice the janitor from Harry Potter was in it? Ah, uh, no. Who was that? He he was like the the main bad guy with. He was in like that like sex swing when they introduced him. Oh yeah 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 yeah. He's the guy in Harry Potter with the cat. Oh, Finnwick <laughs> or Fing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that, sure, that sure. guy that old guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta, I gotta try to wrap my head around this whole movie. So basically, like the account. So he's he's not the. Is he the accountant? Who is Justin? Is he? Because he's bad in the end. Dude, basically, he he was the accountant, but yeah. he like made some master plan to kill himself off so that he could be like the head bad guy. It was like he did so much work for like not that much. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, so like, okay, he was the accountant for Barry, but Barry's not even the real boss. So Justin was trying to take over the guy above his boss's job. I guess I'm not really sure how that tied in Kate Beckinsale's character. Because even in the end, she was like, why did why did you like bring me into this? And I like before he answered in my head, I was like, I just wanted to have sex with you. <laughs> like It's like <laughs> it made no sense. Like he went through so much. If you think about it, like if he didn't have sex with Kate Beckinsale and just pretended he was dead, like his plans would have worked. Yeah. Like if he didn't get her involved because she like inadvertently screwed up his whole plan by trying yeah. to save him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like the script's not great, like honestly, but like. I will say, dude, Kate Beckinsale, I was really impressed with her in this. I thought she, you know, was kick ass. She was seductive. She was just ever. I don't know. I thought she did a really good job. I thought it was cool when she was getting like tortured and she like ripped that IV thing out of her and like sprayed her blood in that dude's eyes. Oh, Remember yeah. that? Dude, yeah. I was like, oh, that's that's not sanitary at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean. The other thing is, like, I, I mean, do you remember, like, Eon Flux and Ultraviolet? Yeah. Like, those movies? Yeah. Like, those are similar, where it's, like, a female superhero, kind of. But, like, I just feel like they had such more distinctive looks, where this is just, like, Kate Beckinsale just is, like, blonde hair. Um, well, they also had actual, like, plots. Yeah. That you yeah. Could follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Aeon Flux, those were, those were, like, pretty cool action movies. Like, Kate Beckinsale just had some, like, anger issue. Like, I thought when she was getting, like, tested by the military and stuff, that she was going to be some kind of, like, secret agent weapon. She was literally just a lady trying to live her life. And she had like this weird BDSM electrodes all over her to like shock herself. Yeah. And then like, I, I kind of liked the flashbacks, I guess. But like some of them were so fast that you're like, where, how could she have gotten mad there? Like when she's at yoga and then she just kicks the guy in the head or whatever. I was like, it was pretty funny. All um, right. All right. I, I, okay. So maybe we looked at this differently. Like, did you go into it thinking it was kind of like a comedy or? Uh, honestly, I went into it not expecting much. So, I, I mean, I left being like, it was exactly what I thought it would be. <laughs> um, I mean, it's an it's an Amazon release with Kate Beckinsale. Like, if you remove Kate Beckinsale from it, oh. it would it would be terrible. I'm not going to lie, dude. Aside, even Kate Beckinsale aside, like, almost every reasonably large actor in this movie, a reasonably sized character in this movie is played by a, a you know recognizable actor. Susan Sarandon coming in at the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was just like, oh, shit, what the hell is she doing here? And then Laverne Cox, I was also like, OK, like they're just every there's so many people I'm recognizing. Now. Speaking of which, the female cop detective, like I thought she was bad at first because she was so aggressive. Like mm -hmm. when when Kate Beckinsale, um, I forgot what she did. Like she was just standing in the hallway or something. She like took her phone out and the detective was like, I'll shoot you in the head. I was like, whoa. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like uh, where she says it to Bobby Cannavale in bed. She's just like, you're in no position to get me or whatever. She's like, but I am. And it's like, oh, shit. She just comes out with a gun like out of nowhere. <laughs> How does it end, though? So she just Stanley Tucci's arrested. She 
Is Justin she, did Justin die? I can't even remember. She killed him, right? I think so. Oh uh, god. <laughs> That's so bad the movies can't even remember how it ends. She she definitely killed him. Okay. But like I, at that point in the movie, I was just like, man, this is it's pretty bad. Like when he when he was like, I'm alive, and he's like, I'm the bad guy. Ha, ha. I was like, oh, this is not good. Yeah, but, I mean, I guess that twist was a lot. I thought Stanley Tucci was going to be the bad guy because right as she's about to leave him for like the last time before he gets arrested, he's like, I got something to tell you. And then she's like, fuck off and just leaves or whatever. I mean, that would have actually know. made sense because then he created this device to kind of control her. And maybe he's like, mm. he's he's a bad guy and his master plan was like, I'll use you as my secret weapon. But then she overcomes it. Yeah, that, that to me is better than like this bad guy who pretended he was dead just right. to have sex with Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the last thing, too, I just want to mention um, when she goes to the big bosses like Secret Hideout or whatever, and they have those like concierge that are standing there 24 hours a day. And they're just like, mm-hmm. you know, that whole situation where she gets fired. Why the hell did that guy just let her go? <sighs> Dude, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think we need to discuss this. Too I, much. Know, <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, would you recommend this to someone? No, no. no. I, okay. I, I honestly like if you want to watch like a female strong kick ass movie, I'd say watch like Resident Evil, or if you want to see a good uh, uh, Kate Beckinsale movie, watch Underworld. But mm-hmm. this, this is not the, this is not the movie. I don't think. How many Keanu's? <sighs> Man, it's <laughs> like I feel like a two is too high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll give it two. I'll give it a two. Two Keanu's. Yeah, I feel like I feel like two is fair. Um, it wasn't terrible, but like no. if you see it once, you're literally never gonna watch it again. So. Right, right. It's I'll put it this way: it's better than Cosmic Sin, <laughs> and that's about it on this wheel. I'd rather stare at a wall than watch Cosmic Sin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so the next one is Blood Red Sky, yes. which I found on Netflix. And when you finished it the other night, you uh, I forgot what you said. You were like, I really liked it or like, I wish we could have done a whole episode just on it. So what, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah. So really quick, this came out on Netflix on July 23rd, 2021. So it's pretty recent. It's like a month old. I had never heard of this. I didn't know anything about it. Dude, I didn't even like it in the beginning. I was kind of like, eh, like, what's, what's going on? And then the second I found out she was a vampire, I like literally couldn't look away. I was like about to take a shower and then I was like, fuck it, let's finish this. Like I was just like, <laughs> let's, I don't know what it was, dude. I just like that idea never really like, I never even thought of something like that. Of what? Of being like a vampire on a plane or like a monster, like snakes on a plane is so stupid, but this seemed really genuine in, in the presentation of like having her be so afraid, but like also scheduling the flights to leave and land at night and stuff like that because she wanted to meet that doctor in, in New York. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was really well executed a little bit too long, but I was just, I don't know, dude, I fucking loved this movie. What about mm-hmm. you? Yeah, I, I definitely liked it. IMDb gave it a 6.1. I, I think that's a little low considering yeah. this was a German movie. It took me probably like 15 minutes before I realized it was dubbed. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so (laughs) really quick, I want to ask you about that. Like, the beginning is like not dubbed. Those are like Scottish people speaking English. So I was like... Yes. So it's like certain actors were dubbed and certain actors weren't. It was weird. Yeah, if you look at the staff, a lot of them are... I I don't know if they're German, but they're not American actors. The only people that I recognize in this film was Dominic Purcell, which was the bald main bad guy yeah dude he loves he's vampire in, movies yeah he's in prison break and blade yeah and blade and then the scottish like in charge dude the colonel guy dude i thought that was jeff bridges from iron man for like the first time <laughs> that, was, that like, was it though like everyone else if you look at them like they're really not in much even the main act- actress which was surprising because she was pretty good yeah man i mean this is uh yeah so this was a german english movie i think it was made by netflix oh no distributed by netflix okay so this is very similar to the the netflix movie that i did when i did the dubbing over for the german movie because it's like netflix bought the movie after the fact and then had american actors dub it over so but dude that's that shows how good this dubbing was that we didn't even notice it most of the time like they they really nailed that yeah Um, i think the concept was cool too i had suspicions just from like You know, if you hover over Netflix, it plays like a brief snippet of the movie. Like, I thought she may be a vampire, but like she also didn't kind of look like a vampire. But it it was definitely cool. Like the whole she was bit and infected and she's trying to like live her life normally, which she she basically could have done up until this point because she was 
avoiding sunlight and she somehow had some like weird medication and she was having doctors give her like full blood transfusions so that she never needed to like feed. So that was yeah. cool. So that was the thing I didn't really I didn't really understand 100 percent because she it seemed like she could have blood and then it would like, you know, ward off the cravings for a little while. But then like towards the end, it was like she just needed blood all the time, like nonstop. Well, she towards the end, she like basically gave into it fully because she had to drink blood to be strong to beat the other ones. And I think it just kind of overcame her at that point. Yeah, because it would seem like, you know, if it was her and her son, I would imagine that they're doing this because I think she's probably losing control. Like, you know, even if she's in Germany or wherever they are, it's like there's a reason, you know, obviously she doesn't want to be a vampire anymore. So she's like, I got to figure this out. There's a doctor in New York who can help me, which is kind of cool that there's like, oh, shit, like, how'd she find that? I want to know more about that. But anyway, so I feel like she was probably going to kill her kid and she knew that. So she's like, I got to get this taken care of. Well, um, that's also why at the end she gave him the remote to the bombs, because I'm, I'm pretty sure she knew the plane had to be blown up because she'd probably lose control yeah that yeah yeah i mean and that's so cool that it's like she had no idea there was gonna be a terrorist attack on like what a shitty day like yeah just, bad bad day <laughs> she's already a vampire she's like stabbing her heart in the bathroom she's wearing a wig like i thought she had cancer at first and then you find out she's a vampire and there's a horrible like air force one style terrorist attack going on on this plane <laughs> and it's really well thought out too it's like they're isis and they like capture the two guys that speak Arabic and they have them read a message, but they also understand Arabic. So they know if they're actually going to do it correctly. I was like, damn, this movie is ah, dude. I liked yeah, it. it was it was especially cool when the guy read the message and Dominic Purcell handed him the script back and he was like, read it how it should be read, like probably with more emotion or whatever. I'm like, oh, shit. No, because he said, I need help. He was like, we are not part of the hijacking. Please help us. He reads that in Arabic oh. and then. Yeah, dude. And then he shoots the other guy and then he's like, read it right. <laughs> and I was like, damn, dude. And then I love it. Do they subvert your expectations by killing that bad guy? And then the, the yeah. crazy guy becomes the lead villain. And I was like, yo, this movie, dude. Yeah. When she, when he drew her blood, I was like, he's going to do one or two things with this. Either like try and sell it. But more realistically, he's definitely going to inject himself with it. OK, so this is the question I wanted to ask you. Knowing what we know about this movie, would you take the blood if you had the choice uh no. <laughs> no dude i don't know i'm crazy man i'm like i don't want to be a vampire but like well here, here's the thing it, it, there's different this was like a really weird representation of a vampire because like in other movies like they look normal they just come out at night yeah and like they can drink like fake blood or whatever but like in this one like they were like monsters who were not themselves you know what well, i mean her, their teeth are falling out like i want to look at it more from like her transformation i think his the bad guy in the plane who injected himself like he was more like violent it, like it just mm -hmm. happened and then he just was like really into it where i feel like i can't remember the lead uh, female character's name but she she was like figuring out ways around it like she was drinking animal blood at first and then she had to pull her teeth out because they were growing i don't know man like i'm thinking about vampires like from preacher like that tv show or whatever mm -hmm. and i'm like damn dude like they get to live forever they can't die really and you just gotta drink some blood you don't have to drink people blood I'm yeah but she saying. was like stabbing whatever that was like into her heart every few hours like it looked pretty painful <laughs> i know i know i know i know um, i was just thinking like man i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was one of the funniest parts of this movie when they were at the airport before they left and the kid was explaining to that like scientist guy like oh yeah like we're over here on the globe and like we're going to new york which is over here he's like but it's daytime over there because it's nighttime here. And like, I thought the, the frigging guy would be like, yeah, no shit, kid. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, he I liked I liked Fareed. I thought he was really good. And the fact at the end, too, when he's just like, ah, we're going to die. I'm like, No, wait, no, he doesn't die. Right. Or does he? I think he does. I can't remember um, now. Shit. I'm no, no, sure. no. He gets taken off and they like for some reason, they think he's a terrorist, like his hands ripped off. He landed the plane. And they were like, he's a terrorist. And oh they put God. him on the Humvee with the military. And he was just like, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> I know, dude. Yeah, that whole time. That reminded me of the end of um, Night of the Living Dead, where it has like that last guy. He's a last survivor. And it's pretty ambiguous. But it's like, did they shoot him because he's black? Or did they shoot him just because they thought he was a zombie sort of thing? So this was kind of that, too. It's like, well, we got to kill him. It's just like, really? Like, this guy has pretty much proven he is innocent. And they're still like, nah. 
nah, send him in. Yeah, that that Scottish colonel was being so like he was like, can I just like come down? And he was like, if you move, we'll shoot you. I'm like, yeah. that's pretty unreasonable, dude. Yeah, I mean, there is it's true. It's like they landed the plane. There's been con- there's been stuff going on in the air. I don't know, man. I don't know. In those situations, um, obviously, the but... house at the very beginning of the movie when like their car broke down and it was like. I don't know where they were in Europe, but it looked like a very cold country and a very cold time of winter. Oh, yeah. And, and the husband was like, ah, I'm going to go find like someone like you guys stay here. And it was the wife and a, and a brand new baby. I'm like, I don't know if you would like, would you leave them there like in the middle of nowhere? What do like, you do? Though? What do you do? I, Cause, I maybe... don't know, but I, I feel like sticking together would be the smarter thing to do. I know, because if you really I mean, like, just kind of think of that situation. It's like, OK, it's going to get really cold in the car soon. But if we take the baby out in the snow, like it could get worse. And we don't know how far it is. Where are, the cell, where are their cell phones? What year is this? I don't think they had service. Huh? Yeah, I don't but... remember. But uh, yeah, like he the husband went off. And then like the same exact thing we were talking about with Fear Street episode two, when the wife went out looking and she saw this like run down crack house in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Clearly, like, dude, the windows were busted out. There was no light, like a tree fell on it. And she was like, I'm going to go in there. Like, why the hell would you go in there? Dude? Well, well, if you're in that situation, though, where it's like you've got a newborn baby, your husband's gone and it's like a blizzard, dude. you might go into I don't uh, that Alec, makes more sense I, to me than fear. If I had like four green berets with me, I'd be like, guys, I don't, I don't want to go into the sketchy ass house. That if you like, had a choice, dude, I don't know. And then she, she went in it, dude, and and again, dude, she went in the house. She saw like bloody steps, and she was probably thinking, oh, it's okay, my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, dude, there was a trail of like a lot of blood going into the basement. And she's like, I'm going to go down there. Like, what What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know. I, yeah, that's a tough situation, though, man. That is, that's a really, that's a situation you never want to get in. All I know is, dude, blizzard or not, if there's bloody footsteps, I'm not following them. That's, <laughs> it's just, you know, when she went down the stairs and that the vampire jumped out and surprised her and he was like, rah, dude, I, I was, I screamed like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> Well, I like that, too, because you don't even know if it's a vampire or a zombie. You really don't know what it is. Um, mm-hmm. And then she goes back to the house and kind of learns more because she yeah. meets, like, you know, his brother or whatever that guy is. I kind of wish she didn't kill him so fast. I kind of wish they could have talked for a minute. But, man, what are you going to do? Well, yeah, that was the dad, and he was pissed because she killed his son. But, yeah, yeah I, I kind of thought it would be cool if they could, like, talk it out and be like, like, how do I live like this? But it, that didn't happen. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this movie, and they probably could have done a prequel where it's like her dealing with it before it gets to the point of them flying out. But I wonder if it'd be as interesting because the thing that makes it interesting is that there's a terrorist attack happening. I know, right? And um, I thought the coolest scene was at the end when the uh, like the military went on the plane and they were all suited up, you know, armor, machine guns. And like you knew what was going to happen. And the second the vampires came out, like they got fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, they're they're not expecting it or I don't know. No. Yeah, I don't know this. I really enjoyed this movie. But uh, how many Keanu's would you give this, Justin? I'm going to give it three and a half. Solid score. I'm going to go with a four. I'm going crazy. You're going to give it the same as Starship Troopers, dude. I mean, it's different, obviously. Yeah, I I know. For a new movie and a vampire movie and a very different vampire movie and a movie you don't even know is a vampire movie until you start watching it, mm-hmm. I, I I thoroughly enjoy it. If you like action movies, this is up your alley. If you like horror movies, this is up your alley. Uh, if you like snakes on a plane, this is definitely up your alley. <laughs> it was good. It was definitely good. <laughs> Cannot really speak highly enough about that one for a new movie. But yeah. moving on to the final movie of the, the episode, uh, we have Fear Street Part 3, 1666, which came out on July 16th on Netflix. The first thing, if you remember, the first thing I said to you was I was a little skeptical before watching it because it was the exact same actors. Mm-hmm. And like, they're not like super famous actors, so I, I didn't think they'd be able to pull it off. But um, they did. <laughs> and then I was even more skeptical because they had like super heavy, like kind of Irish, Irishy accents. Yeah, it was but like, they were definitely supposed to be British, right? Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> like, 
they're Puritans, basically. So it's like, yeah, it's it's English settlers that have been there. I mean, they've been there for, I don't know, 1666. So <laughs> carry the <know>. two. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, settlers have been there for probably, I don't know, 50, 60 years or so. I, I don't know. But yeah, you're right. The accents were were interesting. The one person who really couldn't get it together was the brother, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it <laughs> it just it wasn't fitting. <laughs> hey, hey, it's hard. It's a hard accent, but he it is, which is why I was surprised they made these kids do it. Well, most of them pulled it off. So let me ask you, did you like the fact that um, Dina played Sarah Fear? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, she did a good job. But like, I thought it would have been cooler if even though it's the same actors and actresses, they just kind of like swapped roles. Hmm. OK. So that's kind of what I was going to get to. So it's like the way the second one ends, it almost seems like she's going into Sarah Fear and she's going to become her, right? The second one. So it ends with her like looking into that puddle because I think she or like where, where Sarah Fear's grave is and she touches it and she looks into the puddle and then it's like she becomes Sarah. That's how I thought it was going to go where it's like she's in Sarah's body. We're going to see her, but she's going to still be Dina as Sarah. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then it ends up being that it's just Sarah, but she just looks like Dina. Yeah, I saw it as like kind of like a third person, like looking down view. OK, basically the opposite of, of what you're saying. But right, right. I mean, they, they did a good job. I, I thought it was corny that the same actors had the same roles a little bit. Um, see, I, I kind of see it as like, it's just like history repeating itself. Like, it's like a cycle that just keeps happening. And maybe there's been other Dinas and Sams throughout the years or whatever. Um, okay. But in the beginning, I hated the fact that it was Dina, just not Dina, the, the, but that actress just playing Sarah. I was like, wait, why? Because well, everybody she's else. She's the main, main actress. But she's not in the second part. So like, I understand like she's the lead character in this story, but unless she was going to be Dina as Sarah fear, I wasn't, I was like, what? this doesn't really make sense to me then, but it, you know, whatever, by the end of it, I was like, okay, I get it. I like it. But then you do see the actress who really is Sarah fear at the end, you know, saying yeah. I'm going to get you on this. So I was like, why didn't she just play her the whole time? And then at the end, just like fear street part two, Dina could have been like, now I understand what happened. I saw what happened. But the fact that she was playing it, listen, she's a great actress, nothing against her like abilities or anything like that. I just thought for the movie, it didn't really make sense to have yeah, that actress play that that separate character. They could have ended the third one with like she lifted her hand off the grave and it was just a vision. You right. Know, like she snapped back out of well, it. Well, because that's how the ending of the second one was. It was like they tell the story, but Dina's not playing one of those main characters or the actress isn't playing one of those main characters. It was just them listening to the story and then continuing in 1994, which is ultimately what ends up happening. Regardless, that all aside, what did you think of like the 1666 part? Dude, like, honestly, the first thing I thought of was like, what a scary time to be alive. Like, oh, yeah. They're everyone is they're super religious, obviously, and they're superstitious. And they're also kind of like, I don't want to say dumb because like, it's not like they had like proper educations like we had, but like, they just don't have the same knowledge. So they think like, oh, if two women kiss like the devil's there, then like right. crazy shit like that. And they just start killing people. Yeah. And I was like, man, like. You you had to, especially if you were a woman, like you had to be careful because we're that because that one guy who got a boner and he was like, I want to go have sex with you. And she was like, no. And the next day he was like, she's a witch. We should hang her. I know. <laughs> well, have you, you you remember the crucible? We read that in high school. You remember that? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much I paid attention. <laughs> well, it's kind of similar because that that whole thing is about like a witch and a pastor. And it really felt a lot like this, where it's like there's more political stuff going on in the town that's making them say that Winona Ryder's character in the crucible is a witch They're you know, because people don't like her. So they're trying to like, oh, yeah. I mean, if they so, if they didn't like you, like like I said, the one guy was just upset that he didn't have sex with her and he's like yeah. you should kill her like that it was so funny because the the one guy stood up and he was like does anyone have any actual proof and i was like oh okay this this makes sense and he was like i do and all he did was tell a story he's like yeah i saw her. i saw her and i'm like that's actually not proof he's like where's <laughs> the proof he's like i used me eyes it's like oh okay yeah, yeah you're that drunk guy right you're the guy that's a town drunk cool we should believe that guy i'll say the creepiest part in the movie was when i guess like the main you know the main bad guy who's the sheriff went into the church and everyone's head was down and the, the priest was like muttering. Oh, yeah. Dude, like, I was like, don't, don't go in there, dude. Yeah. Like, don't go in there. He that ripped his awesome. eyes out. Ugh. That was awesome. I'm not going to lie, man. Big twist. I, I, 
I was not confident they were going to be able to pull this whole story off, and they really did. And the whole twist with good being evil or whatever, I was kind of impressed. I was like, okay, shit. And now I want to go back and rewatch the first two to make it like, just watch it knowing that he's the bad guy the whole mm-hmm. time. Only thing I'll say that kind of, I guess, didn't make sense to me was like, I thought at first the sheriff was the same person from 1666. Like he was using the powers to kill people to like Uh, live forever. Right. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like that would have made sense to me. But it turns out that like literally every son in his family tree was convinced to do this. And I was just thinking like, what did they have? Like since 1666, like 20 kids, like you're telling me every single kid, like how did they do that? When they were like, yeah. like, listen, we need you, you know, you can have whatever you want, but you just have to kill people. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Too, and dude. everyone was cool with it. And that's the thing. I was like, there's not one person in the entire bloodline that was just kind of like, this is wrong. Like, we can't do this. And that was the other thing I wanted to ask you. Maybe I missed this part, but just because Nick dies, he's the sheriff or whatever. His brother is the mayor. Isn't he just as just as important as Nick? Well, I think he got like locked up, right? Did he? Because, okay, so so that was the thing I wanted to ask at the end. Remember when Sam and Dina come out of that mansion or whatever? Is that supposed to be Nick's house, the sheriff? I believe that is okay. his house. So, and he lives across the street from his brother, who's okay. the mayor. So his brother then just immediately gets hit by a car. Yeah. I don't but, know if that was, like, karma or but something. But then but then there's a, a TV report right after that that says, family members said they did not know anything about Nick's, like, demon, blah, blah, blah. But... They don't mention the car crash. They don't mention anything. So it's like you see a picture of like his brother walking away from like paparazzi or whatever. And they're like, hey, do you know about your brother? And he's just like, you know, apparently said we don't I don't know anything about this. But they don't mention his brother getting killed in the car crash. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things like that. That house was clearly very expensive and like uh, not something a small town sheriff could afford. Like not one person in the town was like, well, let's see here. He probably makes like. 45 a year and that house is like 700,000 like wait a minute wait a minute yeah yeah it's like okay so I I was kind of thinking about it I was like so he is with the, he's working with the devil okay so let's just like he should be able to do whatever the hell he wants on earth but it's like okay maybe he's you know flying below the radar he's in a small town he just wants to be the king of the small town but like yeah people are gonna question him like I, so what does that mean like when when the irs comes to his house he just like waves his hand like a fucking jedi and people are just like oh i guess we're good here the devil's you know like what how does he get away well, with all this i guess essentially he says somebody's name to die and that death would like make the irs not realize what's going on but but i found that funny because like this guy has these powers right to get whatever he wants in the world and he's like you know what i want to be a cop he's right. like oh. he's like i want to be underpaid like hated by the people and have to work like 70 hours a week like he could have asked to be the president or like yeah. the ruler of the of a cartel or like an actor anything i know yeah that's what i meant maybe he was like conscious of this so that's why he was trying to fly under the radar but i want to say this dude so basically the whole the whole plot of this movie is throughout the years there's been the good family who's been yeah writing names on the walls then they become serial killer because satan mm-hmm. possesses them and they kill somebody and this pretty much happens like every couple of years in this town okay yeah. have you ever heard of skinwalker ranch yes but i can't uh i'm not sure why i've heard of it all right so it's it's a weird little place i think it's in utah and it's like there's so oh, wait, much... is it is this a real story is this like a true thing yeah there's so many documentaries about this like it's like they don't know if it's ufos or if it's like demons or like what it is but there's a la- a piece of land in utah it's called skinwalker ranch and they have so many documentaries about it because like all this weird shit happens there if Sunnyvale and Sunnyshire, or whatever these towns are, if they existed in the real world, there would be so many documentaries. Like there would this, there would be so much attention on this town because it's like, yo, there's a serial killer, not like a school shooter, not just like random, you know, horrible things that happen, but like serial killers every few years in this town. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I still think it would have been much cooler if, like, every however many years he sacrificed someone and he was immortal like i i expected him to say he was the same guy yeah and say like i would have been like no way dude he's immortal but he's like no i'm his super great times 15 grandson and i also just don't care if i kill people yeah yeah it's it's true because it's like yeah i don't know because we don't really know enough about it because it's like at what point do they have enough money and shit that they don't need to do this anymore but then is it like the satan's like i'll take it all away if you don't keep doing it so it's like, I don't know. Well, I don't know, but uh, 
I was completely surprised like when Sarah Fear or whatever went into the basement of her fiance's house in uh-huh. 1666 and she, I saw the the like blood circle thing with a goat's head. I was like, "No way, dude. That's cool." Like it was him the whole time. <laughs> yeah. No, it that that really did get me. I was like, "Damn." And so- you know what, Alec? Honestly, and I you got to agree with me here. The speech he gave as to why he did it kind of made sense. Like he wasn't crazy. He, she was like, why are you doing this? Like you're summoning the devil. And he's just like, bad things always happen to me. He's like, when's it, when's it my turn? He's like, uh, your neighbors don't like you. Like your parents would kill you just because you like someone else. He's like, I just want crops to grow and things to go my way. And I'm like, huh, <laughs> that's a pretty good reason. Yeah. I mean, I guess back then too, you're just like, I don't really know what the hell else to do. I mean, the devil's real, so might as well use it, him. If you think about it, literally this whole, the whole trilogy the whole like Sarah fear and de- uh, the devil, like summoning demons since 1666 all happened because this guy got cheated on. <laughs> like he saw his fiance making out with a chick and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go kill that lady and summon the devil. He's like, cause I'm tired of shit. Not going my way. <laughs> 400 years later, 300 years later, we're still, we're still dealing with this crap. Sorry. Again, I have to ask the question, mm-hmm. where are the parents? <laughs> They're there in the village. Dude, but like when it flashed back to present time and like the kid's arm was all fucked up because it was cut and she made him breakfast and they like they're like, come on, let's go in the car. I'm like, where are your like he left you're the telling note. me you said you didn't see the note where he said I had a job interview. Okay, but like you're telling me when your parents get home, they're not gonna be like, What happened to your what happened to your arm? Like it's broken. Like yeah. how did like did you present medical information for this cast? Like what? No, I agree. I agree. It's I mean, it's it's weird that they're not present. I wish there was kind of a reason for it. But the way that it ended is basically like, oh, okay, so the the book's still there and some hand grabs it or whatever. But I really I know it would have been like cheesy and kind of expected, but they should have been like wait, doesn't Nick have a brother? And then it could have been like, you know, ooh, ah, 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 or like some like 90s song <laughs> or something, you know, to end it. Like, but I don't know. Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Some 90s. I, that was probably 2000s. But I don't know. That, I wanted that because I'm like, okay, so some random hand who's that going to be that like, can explain it. Blah, blah, blah. Of the three, what, what order did you like him in the most, you think? Well, of the three, which do you think did the best and the worst rating wise? I feel like three did the best and one did the worst i'm gonna guess okay so part two did the best yeah that was my favorite then part three and part one got the worst which yeah i mean they're all good so it's hard to say like which one was better i think part three was really good just because they tied it together yeah really well yeah i, I like them all if i had to pick though i would say two three one because yeah. i think the concept of, of two where they're like there's a killer at a camp like you know that's classic yeah or, yeah, yeah, that's exactly why I like it, because I'm just I have such a boner for like those kind of like <laughs> Jason kind of movies. How um, many uh, Keanu's would you give it? I'd give this one a three point five. I thought it was it was a really good way to wrap it up. I liked how the first half was in 1666 and the second half was in 1994. Yeah, man, I think this is this is a really it's a solid trilogy. It's a solid horror trilogy. It's fun. It's pretty scary. Good. I don't know, man. Yeah, check it out. Definitely check these out. I kind of wish I saw them all. A little closer because like we filmed yeah. the, like we I had to wait probably at least a week in between each one. And I, I wish I kind of like just sat through them all. Right. Overall, as a trilogy, good. What would you give it? How many counters? Yeah, I'd say three and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's solid. It's definitely a solid movie. Eric you should watch them. <laughs> I know, dude. Every every time Eric's just like, yeah, I'm definitely like, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I'll get around does. to them. These are these are worth watching. These these definitely are. But I see I still got to give it to Blood Red Sky for this episode. That's my that's my top pick in this one. I was sure. very surprised because I haven't heard anything about it. And even if you if you look it up on IMDb, dude, it doesn't say anything. It's super vague. The description is literally a woman with a mysterious illness is forced into action when a group of terrorists hijack a plane. Like, yeah. what, what, what does that mean? But they can't, but if they, if they say anything about it, it gives know, away the whole twist. So it's, that's, it good. wouldn't be like a mysterious woman who's secretly a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. What do we got going on for uh, two Fridays from today? Let's spin the wheel. Now we can actually pick three full ones. Cause we, we finished the fear street trilogy. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is without remorse. 
Yeah. All right. So this is a uh, Tom Clancy film. So Tom Clancy's Without Remorse, seeking justice for the murder of his pregnant wife. An elite Navy SEAL uncovers a covert plot that threatens to engulf the United States and Russia <laughs> in an all-out war. It's uh, it's with Michael B. Jordan, too. So. All right. All right. The next one is Tentacles. Tentacles? Correct. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm gonna. That would be fun to type in. Okay, <laughs> now uh, tentacles. <laughs> All right, here we go. Tentacles is on Hulu. Okay, let's see what this is. A couple falls head over heels into a new romance and in- intertwines their lives until their intimacy transforms into something terrifying. That is so vague. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a horror movie. It kind of reminded me of like the cover looked like Slither, kind of the cover of that. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, and now right. the third one. Okay, we have two action movies this week. Is going to be the Tomorrow War, which is with Chris Pratt. Oh yeah, I've heard about this one. So the Tomorrow War <clears throat> that is on Amazon as well. Okay, so we have two movies on Amazon, one on Hulu. But this one is the world is stunned when a group of time travelers arrive from the year 2051 to deliver an urgent message. Thirty years in the future, mankind is losing a global war against deadly alien species. Okay, all, all right. right. All the right. Futuristic Chris Pratt alien movie. <laughs> this has got to be better than Cosmic Sense. But Justin, thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. And uh, we will see everybody in two weeks with these three films. Don't forget to check out our regular episode on Monday, which. Uh, <laughs> oh, Piranha. Yeah. So get ready. We have Piranha on Monday. And then we'll see you guys in two weeks with another episode of Fresh Film Fridays. All right.